direction, if you see the xy direction, then if you measure the, the MST, then now you see that this active particle, as I show you in the previous slide, uh, even though it has some directional motion, but you see that initially because of this uh, self-propulsion uh, dynamics, it is ballistic. But after this, uh, uh, this tau A, so that's the inverse of the rotational diffusion constant, then now you see that it shows a, a, a Fickian dynamics, which means that the MST grow linearly with time t. And then here, the, uh, the diffusion constant, of course, it is not related to the uh, Einstein relation because this, most of the, this uh, motion uh, come from this chemical uh, energy. So uh, here also you see that uh, the displacement of this active particle, it has a Fickian, and also you see that their displacement should, looks like a Gaussian a little bit long time. So that it has some Gaussian and then Fickian, so people call this Brownian, but active. So that's the meaning of the active Brownian particle. And here they also, uh, maybe I, I give some additional information. So they, they measure the concentration of this active colloid along the G direction, and then this is the G directions. So it, it, with a higher distance, they are dilute. And then this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, decay is given by this exponential uh, decay, which is given also by the thermal system. And then they, they really uh, found that uh, it can be could be made, uh, define this effective temperature of this active particle, then it explains everything what they call. Uh, and also they uh, uh, confirm that this effective temperature, it can be measured from this uh, uh, M mass, G is the uh, gravitational constant, and delta E effect can be exp uh, measured from this fitting then they, they actually relate that with, uh, uh, from this MST, they can also uh, uh, expected this relation, then they uh, really show that they are the same. Okay, so uh, that's the active Brownian particle. And, and, and so then how we can model this system? So as I said in the, uh, in the few slides before, it has a, a, in principle, you can uh, model this with a rotation, with a translational motion, but this is very difficult. So. Uh, many people in this field also uh, really, uh, like to using so-called active OU particle, active Einstein Ullenbeck particle, so what we call OU part A O U P. So uh, essential uh, idea is like that. So this is overdamped uh, dynamics of this active particle like that. So that this motion of this uh, particle is given by two noise. The first one is come from the thermal uh, uh, fluid, right? So then this psi is a, a ordinary white Gaussian noise. And then we having another uh, noise, which given by like that. So just the sum of these two and this epta is what we call this active noise. And then the uh, easy way is that we actually model, as, as we saw in the previous slide, it is Gaussian and also exponentially correlated so that you can thinking about oil process, which looks like the same property so that you can model this eta like uh, active noise uh, uh, modeled by OE process, so that it has an exponential correlation. So when you are uh, 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 inputting these two, and then if you uh, calculate in the MST of this equation, then now you see that this is a full solution, and then at long time, after uh, t is larger than tau a, then now you see that the MST is linearly grow but that you see that the effective diffusivity is sum of the thermal part and the additional one. So if we use the same Peckley number that I uh, uh, introduced, then you can also uh, show that this uh, uh, diffusivity is given by this uh, form. And now you see that uh, this is a, a Peckley number grow in terms of order of two, like that. And here, uh, this is a simulation of this model, and then this line is the, uh, uh, this uh, theory line. Okay, so that's the, some very basic introduction of the active uh, Brownian particle. And then what our group now interesting is active viscoelastic system. What that means is that now we're thinking about this system, the active particle with, uh, 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 with together with some viscoelastic material, uh, mainly the polymer system, the reason that why we are interested in this system is that thinking about the cell, and then the, 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 uh, the cell can be modeled by the, as a simplest like this. 
So the cell is uh, one of the uh, 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 main components that actually network by a filament like actin uh, microtubules. So it is highly viscoelastic, and also there are many uh, uh, reasons to be out of equilibrium, so active state. So we can actually understand this uh, cell, cytoplasm, as a, like an active viscoelastic system. So there are many of uh, examples which belong to this idea, for instance, like uh, the bacteria motion in the muscus barrier, or maybe uh, it's a very common thing is that the intracellular particle in the cell can be also uh, in this category. And also we can think about active colloidal which diffuse along this uh, polymer matrix. So this is also in this example. And there are some other examples like uh, ER network. I, I don't actually give you the uh, detail, but uh, is, there, is there are many uh, network in the cell? And then here they actually study the cross link of this uh, ER network and they uh, found the motion of this dynamics. And then this actually motion is essentially given by the uh, microtubule motion underneath this part. So it's highly non-equilibrium, and then they, they actually measure this exponent and then something like that. So I don't want to uh, explain this. Uh, and, and, and also, one of the important examples is chromosome dynamics in the nuclei. So there are many uh, 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 ATP uh, consumed uh, uh, particles there, and then the dynamics of the uh, uh, polymer is not actually the passive ordinary dynamics. So it should be understood in terms of this active viscoelastic system. Okay, so then let's give you uh, some, uh, uh, some idea what's going on. So let me thinking about this polymer system like that. So N particle system, so they are, one of them is a Brownian particle, and then they are connected by this harmonic spring. So this is harmonic spring interaction and then this is uh, ordinary white Gaussian noise. And then there are n particle system. So that if you're thinking about this n particle system, even though they are, uh, each of them is a Markovian dynamics, but they are all connected, then eventually when you tag just one particle, and then if you observe the motion of this particle, then their motion is uh, in the end affecting the rest of the particle. And then the dynamics of the rest of the particle also give you feedback to the uh, motion here so that the particle this uh, tag the particle motion should be highly non-Markovian. And then mathematically, you can actually derive that this system can be uh, uh, e explained by effective one particle uh, equation like that. It is like a generalized Langevin equation. So you can see that, so here this corner K uh, is uh, a, 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 a behave like a power law with exponent one half, okay? And then because it is an equilibrium system, so that, that means that it satisfies the fluctuation dissipation theorem. So that means that the correlation of this active, uh, I'm sorry, this thermal energy is, should be uh, uh, given by this relation. So that this K is a power law correlation, as I said, this. So that means that this, uh, 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 this in, in this level, this thermal noise can be understood like a fractional Gaussian noise which has host exponent three quarter. Then it is essentially explain uh, the dynamics of this particle. So that the key idea, something like very similar, uh, replacing one of them is like active Brownian particle which connected to the uh, polymer system. And then, and then the claim is that what should be, I mean the initially, actually the, the first question is, this dynamics can be given by this simple Langevin equation. That's the, our first, question. If yes, then we, our second question is what should be uh, the thermal and active noise in this level because it, it is coarse grained uh, noise. And then uh, the, the other one is that what should be the memory corner K. So of course in the field, the people just uh, in ad hoc manner just uh, uh, provide some, some kernel, then they just explain whatever. But my point is that we can, is there any mathematical derivation like this systematically? So uh, based on this idea, uh, the, the first uh, uh, system that we studied is like this. So this AOUP particle, active uh, particle, is now connected through this uh, polymer like that. So this is uh, the, the total uh, system, and then if you're thinking about one, uh, some, uh, some repeated motif, then uh, essentially one uh, uh, cross-link uh, active particle is link the arm like that. And then the motion of this active cross-linker 
will affecting the, uh, uh, this polymer network and then eventually the polymer network feedback to, uh, to the, uh, these antiparticles so that they must having some very strange correlation so that we can uh, use very simple model so that we can, uh, uh, in, so we, we start with a large polymer, so flexible polymer with this uh, active particle. Uh, okay, so that we can very easily simulate this. And then the reason that we actually start with this uh, system was we saw the paper, like long uh, old paper, and then this paper, the, the experimental guy, they want to study the colloidal dynamics in the uh, physical elastic gel network like that. And then they measure, so they uh, prepare many different uh, network system, and then they measure uh, the particle motion inside this uh, 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 network. And then they, uh, they found that when this uh, uh, colloidal is very sticky, so very uh, stick to the polymer network, then they uh, show that independent of this network, they all show this uh, MSD with alpha of 0.5. That was a, their, their observation, and at the time, their model, was like, their model was like that. So they explained that. So that I did uh, uh, the active particle version, and this is a simulation of one of them. So it is a, blue is a flexible chain, and red one is an active particle like that. So we know this uh, trajectory, so that now I show you this uh, MST of this particle. And then uh, let's, let's look at this case that uh, uh, the Brownian particle the black one, the, the, the blue one, the bottom part. And then, as I said, in the, uh, uh, in the Brownian particle, it shows uh, uh, the, uh, uh, in the theory, uh, I, I show you that uh, anomalous diffusion with alpha 0.5, one half. That was expected dynamics, what we call this Rouge dynamics. So in this time scale, so you see that they showed it uh, 0.5, and eventually we simulated the fixed boundary condition so that it confined like that. And then now we turn on this activity. So that now we're increasing the Peckley number, then now you see that uh, this. Now you see that it looks that the, this uh, alpha is now smaller. So which, which means that more self-propelled motion, which eventually give you more negative feedback, so eventually more sub -depressive. So that if you don't know anything, then if you just measure the uh, particle dynamics in the, let's say, in the cell, and then now you observe, if you observe, let's say, alpha 0.2, then initially you may see that, oh, they're crowded and there are some anything. But actually, it could be the case that the self-propelled motion can give you this strange effect. So more self-propelled, then more sub -depressive. This is uh, one observation. And then uh, we also found that this is a Gaussian displacement. And then uh, when we measure the velocity correlation, it's a negative correlation. So that uh, we uh, try to solve this uh, uh, problem uh, from this uh, the same embody coupled Langevin equation. And then uh, we, we convert to the normal mode. And then the MS can be uh, uh, some expression for that. So we, we, we can calculate this even uh, in principle. Of course, it's very complicated. but. Uh, in principle, it is possible. Then, if we uh, polishing this uh, equation, then in the end we obtain this. This is a, a, a final uh, result. So that you see that the MST surprisingly given by this form, like that. So the first, uh, uh, so here the the root t is as I say the thermal motion, which is large feedback. So it should give give you one half, and then surprisingly there is additional term in log t. And log t comes from self-propelled motion of active particle. And then we found that this log t is uh, given even though uh, if we change a Peckley number or the boundary condition, also the, uh, the style of this uh, active noise. So we found that this log t comes from because of the harmonic interaction, because the polymer is harmonic spring then we should having this term. And then what we observed was actually the sum of the exponent alpha is actually this some empirical uh, fitting of these two terms. And then you see the B. Factor B is you see that uh, one of the inverse VP square is a Peckley number square. So if you have a higher Peckley uh, number, then this term is uh, relatively small, then we will have log T uh, dynamics. Uh, and also, we, 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 we also uh, calculated the velocity to correlation, and then they show the two power of correlation, like that. So there are two additional 
uh, term, and then one is the uh, two third, which comes from somal part, and then the other active particle, uh, active uh, uh, thirds come from this this part, and this is uh, power uh, second, and then from this observation we can uh, suggest that like that. Okay, so we can actually thinking about this uh, really which uh, essentially give the same uh, velocity to correlation function if we writing down in this way. So that the k, the corner should be the same of this inverse one over uh, half. And then we have a two uh, term like this, thermal and active. And the thermal part is, as I said, should satisfy the FDT, so it uh, sat satisfy this. And then this active noise is uh, exponentially correlated noise, and it is not related to uh, FDT. So uh, you see that this uh, correlation does not explain the K, but if you thinking about this, and then you, we found that uh, from actually at that, at that time, we, we found this PRD paper that in, 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 in the paper they studied that, why, I don't know why, but they studied this very similar equation, and then they, they show that if active, no, I mean this uh, correlation, this uh, of this uh, uh, this function is like exponential, then they show that it is log t. So this gives the log t, and this is uh, root t. Right. And then after that, we change it to uh, the same problem, the semi-flexible polymer network. And then the motivation is that uh, actually the more relevant is a semi-flexible chain like that. Uh, and then, so that, that, that's the uh, uh, same MSD. So now you can see uh, similar but very uh, interesting different behavior. The first thing is that now when uh, colloid particle, the Peclin number zero, is uh, attached to the, this uh, uh, semi-flexible network, then now the exponent is three quarter. And this three quarter is not surprising, and this is actually the known exponent for this undulation dynamics of semi-flexible polymer. So it's, it's not surprising. And then now we're adding the Peclin number, then now you see that the slope is in slower and slower, which means the more sub subdiffusive. But the interesting point is that even though we're increasing the Peclin number very high, then the, the slope is essentially stop like one half. It is one observation. And the other one observation is that now we see another exponent two, uh, uh, three over two. So initially super depressive after tau A, it give you, give you this one over half. And it is very interesting because as I said, when you observe alpha equal to one half in the cell, then mainly this flexible polymer of large chains uh, exponent is like a passive particle, but this shows that no, it, it can be actually active particle in the semi-flexible chain. Then it gives you one half. So you don't know what's going on. So this is a simulation I can show you. So it, as you see that it's very different from the flexible case. And so again here, we, we just uh, claim that, okay, so we can explain this dynamics again by the same jelly approach like that. So then our main question is, what should be the K, right? In the previous, uh, uh, in the previous problem, we exactly solved the problem and then we found the K, but now we don't have it. So that we have to know what should be the K, and then we actually deduce what should be K from so-called tension propagation theory. So imagine that if, if we're having this active particle here, then it perturb in the system, and then this perturbing tension propagate along the chain like that. And this uh, tension propagation uh, uh, actually uh, explained by this equation. So here, uh, this term actually comes from the semi-flexible polymer. So from this equation, uh, we can actually uh, know that uh, the, the time that the, the, this tension propagates just one segment distance, so we call this tau naught, and then the other uh, time scale that this uh, fluctuation can affect to the, uh, the last one is tau r. It is, uh, so we have a two propagation time. And then once we uh, uh, perturbing the system, then uh, because they are connected, so this, as I said, this tension is propagating. So they, they are more and more particles now move together. Right? So that we can thinking about this frictional coefficient of this single particle is now not same and it is increasing. So this is, is the idea of the tension propagation theory. So from this idea, we can actually uh, uh, derive that 
uh, gamma should be this exponent, so it should be k like that. So uh, from that, we can actually explain that uh, the k is given by the basic time scale and exponent, and also gamma is the frictional coefficient of the filament, and f is the number of arms. And then the thermal part should also satisfy this FDT, so it is connected by that. And then this active noise is given by this exponential noise, like Auri noise. So we know this equation, then the mathematics is, is the same. So we can solve this, and then we can arrange, uh, simplifying the, uh, the term, then in the case of MSD, it's given by two terms, uh, as I said, thermal part and active part. And this thermal part is, you see, the given by the exponent alpha, right? So that's the, this one. So alpha is three quarter, like that. And then in the case of active part, when we solve this, and then we found that they have a two different scaling depending on the tau a. If the uh, time is smaller than tau a, then slope is 2a here. And then uh, larger than the tau a, then it should be 2a minus 1. So the alpha is 3 quarter. So if you plug in, then we observe uh, 2 third and uh, uh, three, uh, it's a 3 over 2 and uh, uh, 1 half. That what we observed in the simulation. And actually this theory not only uh, explain the scaling, also we actually explain the amplitude. So if you look at this, uh, the, this term, then there are the same part is also uh, appear here. So we can divide it by the same factor. Then we can actually having the scaling function like this. So all these uh, curves should be collapsed once we uh, rescale well x and y. So we did, and then you see that if we changing the tackling number and uh, 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 persistent length and also number of arm, that they all collapse in the same. So very nicely they explain uh, the behavior. How much time do I have? <laughs> Couple of minutes. Couple of minutes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so I think this part, uh, uh, my student Yang Jin is having the a poster, so <laughs> you can actually uh, see this. So I just uh, explain up to the time. So uh, uh, the second part, as I said, uh, we are now studying the uh, active particle now embedded in the polymer network. So here we constructed like a cubic lattice like that. So polymer network is given by this geometry. And then now we have an active tracer, OU particle, with a different uh, peculiar number. And also size of the particle can also vary. So that uh, we can actually want to know that we, uh, we, we change the size of the particle, and also we change the peculiar number. Then by changing these two uh, 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 variables, then we want to know that how the uh, active diffusion will be. Okay, so. The, we, we did the, uh, the full simulation, and then I will skip the small size tracer. Uh, Youngjin will explain you. So that, okay, then when the particle is very small, then very easily uh, 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 diffuse through the uh, network. So there is uh, some, uh, some story, but uh, Youngjin will explain. And, so, and then if the particle is larger, then the, the particle is now stuck in, 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 the, uh, uh, in the confined, right? And then this is a, a typical tra trajectory. So you, you see that uh, essentially the motion is like a trapped and then hopping and trapped and hopping, like this kind of diffusion. Comp and then in particle number zero case, you see that mostly the particle is confined and then they escape from uh, uh, the neighbor side and they go to the nearest neighbor like that. But in the case of active tracer, now you see they can very easily moving through, so now you see that their, their three-dimensional uh, trajectory looks like that, right? So more active, then they have a more, uh, 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 like a uh, hoping is now up here. So that we measure this uh, waiting time of trapped this trip, uh, time, and then they found, we found that it is nicely explained by this uh, uh, exponential distribution, and then we found that this exponential distribution is uh, very robust. So we, even though we change the harmonic spring or like EV exclude volume interaction or chain stiffness, whatever, 
actually this uh, exponential law is valid. So it is very different from some other literatures that people studied like active trace in the post media then they found like a, a parallel distribution. But in this system, it's, a, it's like a simple uh, exponential law is maintained. And then we also uh, uh, measure the flight length distribution. How, how, when we have a hoping, that what should be the hoping distance? And you see that very peak. And that means that in the case of uh, uh, thermal uh, uh, Brownian particle, it's uh, just a uh, nearest jump. But in the case of uh, active particle, it's a multiple mesh jump is now possible, like multiple jump. And then if you measure the PDF, then they have oscillating and the decay like that. So very interesting like that. Then, okay, so this is a MSD. So when the uh, particle is a Brownian particle, they are confined and then subdiffusive here. Then eventually they uh, show the Brownian motion because of this whole system is moving. Now the peckle number is high. Then the interesting thing is that now you see that the confinement effect is disappear. So that eventually now you see that in the long time always, even though the particles are in the, in the polymer system, they show the active Fickian dynamic, linear rotis recovered. And the, at this uh, peckling number, that is almost linear, which, which means that they don't feel any confinement effect in the polymer. And then more high peckling number, then you see that they are uh, super TPC, but eventually after tau A, uh, the, uh, the memory time, then they show the uh, T, uh, active Brownian uh, Fickian dynamics observed. And then, so uh, we uh, try to explain uh, this behavior um, from this idea, but I will skip because of the, this time. Uh, and then, I, then the interesting point is that what actually now we realize is that whole, whole this system can be understood in terms of this active radio crossing. So we have a very periodic potential in, in the system, and then now we active particles uh, in the confined in one uh, uh, world, and then now it actually escaped from the, the nearest neighbor or uh, the multiple jump. So that's the, what actually we observed. So this is, a, I think, a very interesting problem, which can be applied to many other systems. So actually we did. So we found very similar behavior, but there are some difference. And uh, this is the last slide. And, and, and so, so uh, we, we now show you uh, the diffusion constant, long time diffusion constant as a function of Peckley number. And as I said, depending on the tracer size, they have a very different behavior. So that uh, in the small tracer, I, I think Youngjin will uh, answer. So today I just explained the mesh size particle. And then mesh size particle, the diffusivity can be explained by this idea. So that means that it's like a, uh, average distance uh, 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 square divided by uh, time, and the time is uh, trapping time, and then flight time plus something. So, uh, so here, we, when the peculum is very small, then they are essentially trapped. So essentially, the uh, center of the mass is moving, so then the peculum number scaling is peculum number order second, and then uh, when uh, a pickle number is in this range, then uh, trap and hoping is occur, then very sensitively increasing, and then eventually very high pickle number, they, they are just hoping. So that we have another one. So we, we can explain this behavior like that. Okay, so that's all. So today I show you two different uh, uh, polymer system in the behavior of active diffusion uh, of this. Uh, okay, and then I show you uh, the, the people who are working on this uh, uh, project. So I especially thank, uh, actually I didn't show you here, but uh, Professor Wang Gyu Kim here. I really thank you for <laughs> collaboration. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Wang Gyu Kim here, the first. <laughs> time for one big question. Yes. Uh, thank you for your talk. Yeah. Uh, in the middle of your talk, yes. for the ABP crosslink, uh, you introduced that uh, as the peckling number increase, the diffusion goes more anomalous. But hmm. why does it, in, it intuitively, why does it go sub diffusive, not super diffusive? Uh, intuitively. Uh, so it is actually negative feedback. So the, the, this uh, the polymer system give you the, so if you push, 
then actually the rip, uh, the, uh, this, uh, uh, this friction is not immediate and it is like a retarded time friction and it is accumulated in the end. So eventually, and also you can imagine that it is connected to the polymer system. So it can actually escape much from the original place. So this feedback is highly negative. So eventually it gives you uh, the negative uh, correlation in the end. So that's the, 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 the idea of this uh, subdiffusion. Thank you. So does it tell something about uh, rheology about of the polymer chain? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, thank yes, you. Yes, yeah. So your system reminds me of the uh, this biological system acting, you know, uh, myosin working in the actin filaments, mm -hmm. mesh of actin filaments. But somehow I feel that uh, treating this active particle just freely diffusing inside the mesh work is uh, somewhat different from the myosin working. I mean, do you, do you see it just, uh, I, it just remind, your talk just reminds me such a system. So mm -hmm. do you see any difference uh, with, uh, from the biological system and your artificial system? Uh, so uh, actually I can keep discussion about this point, but I found that Exactly same dynamics actually observed long time ago that this uh, two slope in the case of myosin motor is just a move, uh, it, it's like fluctuating the cell, uh, the, the polymer. Then it also give the exactly the same equation and exactly same dynamics is experimentally observed. So that I think there are very similar things actually happened in, in, in the system. Yes. Yeah. So what the yeah. Is you know, the filament and working around the filament, right? Yeah, but your, right. your active uh, particle is just uh, freely diffusing. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, diffusing and then just yes, kind of yes. ballistically mm. moving, uh, yes. self-propelling. So. so, yeah, so what you see that this network orientation is very random. So it having like a homogeneous isotropic properties also assume. And then when uh, this myosin motor pushing the, uh, uh, like a colloid particle, then it is like a, something like a random force and it also like exponentially correlated the memory. So then the full idea that what we show here is very similar to the real system. The real system is that the system inside the intracellular environment in the active dynamics in, in that system is very similar. So that they uh, actually, people in the Israel people, they also invented actually the same, same model and then very similar result for them. <laughs> 